There we go. <laughs> Hello, uh, Sound Engraver here. Uh, welcome to the first installment of establishing rhythm and composing rhythm in Super Collider. So as we can see here, the, the kick synth, which we built last week, and also evaluating that synth here. And we've got ourselves a good instrument. We can change the values. We can um, add new uh, arguments, you know, like uh, you know, a, a lower frequency passing through um, a curve value to make a maybe a steeper envelope or a, a long, slow uh, ramp down. But we can only do so much. We can record these sounds and then we can put them on our digital audio workstation and line them up and 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 do all that work. But if you're someone like me who has struggled with percussion in the last uh, few years, uh, you want someone, you want something with a uh, a sequence, um, something built in. And uh, I have to introduce you to Pattern. It has been a lifesaver for me in my composition and creative process. And uh, it is an incredibly elegant and flexible class that is in Super Collider. And as you can see here in our help file, it's an abstract class it's an abstract class where you can't really modify it, but you don't really have to. You know, the the the, the writers of this elegant language have um, done everything for us. And as you can see, all these subclasses, just wonderful, beautiful opportunities there. And uh, this is where I'll show you uh, how I develop rhythm in Super Collider. We won't go through all the subclasses. In fact, we're only going through two, and that is P bind here, and also P bind def or P bind def very fast. <laughs> so uh, we'll start with P bind. Uh, as you can see, P bind combines several value patterns to one event stream. So. Um, think of it as a the list as a musical score and one event stream as our output as our performance It combines these by binding uh, to one stream event by binding keys to values So what does it mean? What, what is uh, what are keys and what are values? Well, uh, actually, it's uh, quite simple. Our keys are our arguments and our values in this lovely magenta purple are, um, you know, what uh, what establishes that resulting sound. So what we have to do with this uh, p bind def is, uh, or not p bind def, excuse me, uh, this p bind, uh, well, really the synth. We have to just modify it a little bit. So the p bind is actually going to look a little bit like the synth, but I organize it. In, uh, in, in a different way. Uh, I will keep this name uh, here in brown and I will change the uh, replace synth.new with pbind. Uh, the name kick alone doesn't stand out for pbind as, as part of its structure. So I will add an instrument key and use the, the name kick, our, our synth name for that. We're going to get rid of this array here and we're simply going to stack it down and organize it as a list. And get rid of that there. We will also need uh, an output argument. So I have that defaulted at zero. And we will also need a play message. And we'll go ahead and enclose it in parentheses. And that's, and there we have it. <laughs> we have a, a loop going on. And using our name. We can command it to stop. We can also command it to run up again. So 
so hopefully using this kind of as a built-in sequencer, I, I kind of see it as, a, a, should give you some ideas on, on how to explore this. Uh, I'm going to include another uh, key, which is dur for duration, and I'll just have it defaulted at one, which is that beat, uh, 60 beats per minute. That's just what the uh, system uh, tempo clock is defaulted at. But you also don't have to take my word for it. I'll do half a beat, essentially eighth notes. And then I'll do a quarter of a beat. Someone's knocking at your door. They're angry. Uh, so uh, that's that's pretty much that 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 built-in sequence. That is the performance, the one stream event or one event stream. So see it as a, a stream uh, running through and outputting as you see here. Now we can be much more flexible. Uh, with, with pattern, there, there are so many things inherited uh, by this or inherited from this, this one abstract class. Uh, we'll just dive into a few here. Uh, we'll start with pseq. So pattern is indicative by the capital P here, seek being our sequence or a sequence. And any sequence will have an array. So I will do essentially two quarter notes, two sixteenth notes, uh, an eighth note and another quarter note. This is how I process it. I'm a music teacher, so. <laughs> uh, so after we, um, it, it, does, it does require a, a list as, as you see here and, and here. And as, after I've completed that list, it's asking for a number of repeats. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do four for kicks. No pun intended, that was not on purpose. Two, three, and four. And then you see it release, and you hear it release. So uh, pseq is sequentially embedded values in a list. So this array being in a list, and it goes in order. Uh, it doesn't have to be just four times. It can be infinity. And it will just go on and on and on. But we won't try that out. <laughs> uh, the, the forever, you know. Uh, so that is pseq. Uh, we will also do something called prand, which will also require a list. And I'd like to go between different frequency values of our freak A argument as we had established last week. And I'll, I'll do two. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I was stumped for a second. That's actually, once it's two, that, that's it. So uh, even though I didn't complete my sequence here, the shorter number uh, has the say. So it only picked two frequencies. In fact, I think it only picked 1000 in this case. It, it doesn't go in order. It randomly selects from this list. So you're going to need uh, just to be safe. <laughs> I, I usually do infinity. And so on. Um, so as you can see, PRAND here, um, it chosen randomly from a list. And under the help uh, file, you can see that the patterns, uh, it's, it's under the list category. And we'll do one more called P white for our amplitude. And this is not in a list, but it will need a low value, which I'll go to maybe a tenth of that amplitude to maximum amplitude one and go ahead and, and continue doing it in, in 
infinity. So the amplitude is going to pull between these values at any floating point. As you can see here, it's under the list, um, under the category random. So you may have seen that I've had to either do a hard command to stop or um, evaluate this message here, stop, uh, every time I've had to tweak values. And that's because if I were to play it, and then just say I wanted half the amplitude. You can see here and also here uh, that it's getting a little crazy and we're, we're stacking sins and it's, you know, eventually if you're not careful, you, it can get costly it can and it can uh, you know take up a lot of CPU and it's also not that safe it can crash your server and, and all of that uh, that's just a you know th those are about seven or eight cents so nothing too hazardous but it's also chaotic so if I wanted to change the values in real time that's where pdef well pdef too but um, uh, I, I didn't mention pdef before. Uh, pbind def is actually uh, a subclass of pdef, which is inherited from patterns. So we'll work on pdef, not pdef, pbind def, <laughs> uh, and go ahead and oh, establish that. I didn't want to copy that. I actually wanted to copy the. Excuse me. There we go. It's late. All right. We're going to do this right. All right. Good. Good. OK. So uh, for this case, in this case, we don't need uh, a name for pbind def. However, we will need a specific pbind def name using a symbol. I, I did forget about that momentarily. Uh, we will keep our instrument key and our synth name kick. Uh, we'll go back to just a nice steady beat and we'll, you know, keep that there. And that should be good. And I do not need a stop command or play command, as you'll see. Not the most exciting rhythm, I will say, but you get the point. It is awful quiet. I'm just going to keep it. Oh, I know why it's quiet. It's actually not the amplitude. It's actually the attack of the, the kick drum. Let's, let's do this. It might sound horrendous. There. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. There we go. So, anyway, hard stop. And you can see I, I uh, evaluated, you know, several times and the sense didn't stack and you, you didn't hear any, you know, fluctuating or added added uh, kick drum sounds. So 
Uh, that that's the uh, foundation uh, uh, that uh, I use. That the method that I use to um, build rhythm in Super Collider. And uh, in the following videos, we'll look at you know adding some snare and maybe some light percussion, uh, possibly panning in the background, and and seeing where we can go with that. But hopefully, that gives you some ideas on how to use rhythm in Super Collider. And until next time, thank you for watching, and if you have any uh, comments or, or feedback, I'd love to hear in the comments below. And uh, uh, thank you for watching and listening, and I hope you've enjoyed it.